it's a wrap on this segment of the program we take a breather at this juncture we will be back to look at some of these stories when we come back please stay with us all right welcome back everyone it's rise and shine here on ibr 92.5 fm ibadon my name is Anuluapo Omoride. I've got Sumbo Badejuku here. Good morning, Sumbo. Good morning, Anu. Good morning, our listeners. Happy weekend as well. We're the same. You can be part of this program by dropping a text message on our Facebook page. Our Facebook account is IBR 925FM. IBR 925FM. You can send a text message to 0902-28092-57. 0902-28092-57. And of course, you can tweet at us on at IBR925FM in Baddon. In the cable, with three Naira difference, parallel and official forex rates near convergence. The Naira depreciated to 1,470 naira per dollar at the parallel section of the foreign exchange market on Friday. The current forex rate represents a 1.38% depreciation from the 1,450 naira traded on May the 8th. Currency traders known as Buru the Change operators quoted the buying rate at 1,430 naira and the selling price at 1,470 naira leaving a profit margin of 40 naira as if that is not enough now sumbo we're going to look at why the brood the change operators are buying at 1430 naira the cbn almost sold to them at the rate of 1000 naira some weeks back what has happened i raised that alarm yesterday but you have this naira drops from best to worst performing currency. That's coming from a report. Naira has dipped from the best to the worst performing currency. According to a new Bloomberg report, this is a reverser in its recent gains emerging as the worst, worst performing currency after a wonderful performance last month. So, Sumbo, it will take the Naira just a month to move from being the best performing currency across the globe to the worst performing currency so when you have the worst performing currency what does that tell you about your economy what is the implication of this the same bloomberg that reported naira has the best you know currency last month has reported the same naira within one month as the worst performing currency when you, when you look at uh, corporations like bloomberg uh, they, they are fond of going back and forth when they reported as uh, nera as the best currency it was still questionable because uh, we are the one that spends the nera we know the value we understand what goes on in the foreign exchange markets and uh, we were also questioning the indices that were used to arrive at that conclusion. Now they are back to say it's the worst. Even this worst, too, there are currency worse of that than the Naira. So when they say it's the worst in the world, that is also questionable. So that's why I seldom uh, believe in this report coming from uh, uh, corporations like that of Bloomberg. But well, now, that said, the only thing that can make Naira to be stronger is production. And as far as we are concerned today, we ain't doing much of that. You understand? Yes, we export, we still export raw materials. When we say production, it means we are producing, we are adding value to those materials locally, and we are exporting those value-added products out of this country that is what will make naira to be strong because that's what to make the naira to be sought after by 
importers from i mean from abroad who wants to buy our manufactured good like we go to buy cars buy your manner of manufactured goods from other countries you understand that is the condition and for production to take place we are talking about creating an enabling environment for industrialization up till today power is still epileptic and i'm sure i'm being economical with uh, the truth if i say epileptic there are communities and not too far from us who have not seen a blink of power in three years and they exist in this same country you understand so why would you have such a situation in place okay so the question is who takes charge who lead this drive under Emika Doso, the CBN has introduced so many policies. I just talked about the fact that less than a month ago, as at the time, Bloomberg rated Nigeria's Naira as the best performing currency. Things were already looking up. But investigation has shown that the spectators are back. Right? I got that report some two days ago. Now, it appears the CBN is a place as a tour this case of sabotage the fact that nigeria's economy is what it is now amidst all of this you have in the nation united states says nigeria's monetary policies laudable i raised the alarm yesterday that the world bank imf would be the one to give nigeria classified information about their economy uh, larry did describe it as you know not being a classified information as it were now this is united states again saying nigeria's monetary policies laudable monetary policies controls the forex rate and all that the story says the united states government has lauded nigeria's monetary policies has been conducive for businesses to thrive as well as strengthening and positioning the nation's economy for overall growth are we being told the truth by the united states or nigerians have been lied to looking at all the indices on ground when we say when we talk about the economy it is not limited to monetary policy or the role of the cbn you understand that would concern more of the macro side and the economy is comprised of both the macro and the micro we're not saying the, uh, much about the fiscal policy the fiscal policy is what affects production the most because that is where taxation is and part of why reason why we have high inflation is because of the levies that this company mean, the high cost of production let me just sum it up to that that's why we're in this mess. <laughs> that is why we're in this mess high cost of production high cost of logistics now both are linked to petroleum products and power it is an aberration we do not have functional refinery we, we are talking about dango should we not have a functional refinery that is where i'm going on record nigeria remains the only oil producing country without without a functional refinery before begin, people will begin to talk about Dangote, I will ask them, have they felt the impact of, Dangote's refinery. of that Dangote refinery within the economy since it commenced operation? Why is Nigeria not feeling it? Because that refinery is not really fulfilling the purpose as we speak. Go around. This is still being sold around an average of 1,450 naira. Dangote is saying he's selling at 9.50. To who? How come we are not seeing it at 1,100? You understand what you are saying? So, until it begins to sell that cheap, which is still not cheap anyway, that is when we can begin to feel the impact. The same crude is what he will use to produce petrol. It's not manufacturing petrol. I mean, it's not refining petrol as we But um, So, how do we now feel it? Then... How can a country of 225 million population by hexamates rely on a single or two refineries? Okay, so that is, that those it, are things. If Netherlands without an oil, 
can have the largest refinery in Europe, we have a problem. So where is the sincerity of purpose? Federal Executive Council meets every Monday. There is a substantive minister of state for petroleum. We don't have a minister of petroleum, but we have minister of state for petroleum. There is the minister of gas. What is it that those noble men sit down to talk about economically? What does the like of Wali Edu preside over? You know, you ask yourself, has it not occurred? And that was the question I asked. Between the coastal highway and refinery, which is the most important now? So when you don't fix the economy, you build roads. Is it dead bodies that will move on the road? You see, these are questions. So, Sumbo, when we throw this question to the people, the people will push it back that the government is there. They ought to take charge. They ought to think in this direction. I can't, I've lost count of how many times you have asked how come we don't have a functional refinery? The Potaco refinery will come back, will come to life in February, uh, May, June, the end of the year. There is no actual date. Where is sincerity of purpose in governance in all of these? Unfortunately, there is none. There is none. And it would be unfair of us to push those questions to the people because they do not have answers to them. You understand? The right quarters to push the questions to is the government. They are in charge. They are the ones misplacing their priorities. And governance in this country, I've told you, over the years has become transactional. And that is why those at that end only focus on themselves. Up to now, we are still asking a question on the cyber security levy. Now, how come the amendment happened in this year and nobody heard about it? You understand? And the only thing we will hear is the announcement. Do you understand what we are saying? And look at what was written it. Because coming up with such a thing is an indictment on the media, the civil society organization, the labor union, because they will claim to have held the stakeholders meeting on awareness which none ever took place. So when you see that insincerity on the part of the government, it simply means one thing. We do not have a government in place. Okay, um, let, let's move on. So you have the lead story in the Punch newspaper. Cause to highway controversy. Minister plans live transmission of reps pro panel hearing. The Minister of Works, Senator Dave, David Umahi, has said he is ready to face the House of Representatives probe over the controversy surrounding the 15 trillion Naira Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway Road project. Umahi added that he planned to ensure the exercise was televised live for all Nigerians to see. The minister also stressed that there was nothing to hide about the project, stating that he and the Ministry of Works followed due process and obtained the necessary approvals and documentation for the project to commence because this is important perhaps to the government to the ministry of works to the minister this is to what extent he is ready to go to defend this 15 trillion naira project refinery is important to nigerians how many times have we had live transmission of you know the visits made by the other committee so all of these things raise questions you know in the mind of nigerians the minister is ready to transmit the reps probe panel here in live because it appears this project is a do it's a must do for this administration what do you have to say it's been uh, branded <laughs> as a legacy this project, project for this administration just as Buhari will point at Second Niger Bridge. You understand? But the thing is, yes, that is one minister doing his own job the best way he understands. He wants to settle the controversies surrounding the award of the contract once and for all. 
how he will be able to defend the link between the president's family and the con uh, company that got the co contract is what I do not know. Maybe his live broadcast will help that. But back to the others. When was the last time you had Heineken Lepobri gather pressmen together to brief them on developments within that sector? Eperi Kweepo, who is the one in charge of gas, when was the last time you even had him, even granted an interview? He's been given another job by Mr. President. You understand? There is still uh, Anojo Virgin, well, what is the name of that woman, that young, brilliant woman, who is still an advisor on energy, which comprises both. When was the last time you even had a loo from her mouth? You understand? To the pressmen or to anybody. So when you have this, it means that the president is doing something that Nigerians do not understand. Because if he's pushing them on their toes, they will speak. I think the performance of the ministers for the first quarter will be submitted. Atlanta is it's ready. Um, upon arrival from Netherlands, I think the president will have you know, the first quarter performance report of the ministers. But someone has suggested that, okay, I think it was Jimo Ibrahim that said yesterday that uh, <laughs> these ministers are not mobile, as it were, that the president should sack them. Yes, because there is uh, some high degree of, let me say, politicking going on there at the federal level. I wouldn't want to dwell too much on that because uh, it will attract some reactions which will not help the program today but that is the fact but the president too you understand seems not to be focused he wants to attract investments meanwhile there are problems locally that needs attention that if those ones are not attended to those investments will not come but you so only get promises but they will not show up because they are not fools it, it, it seems to be a complex one governing a country like Nigeria. Uh, do you take time out? At it's times because to... of the way and manner we play politics. You know, politics determines governance in, in any place in the world. That's true. Uh, we have some set of people who are, in poli who are our politicians who I would say they may be politicians, but a good number of them are political illiterates. Oh my. I am not sorry to say it. Their attitude and actions is what is displaying that because you should know that politics is a call to service but when you are not serving the people but yourself that you are a political illiterate it means you don't understand the purpose of you being in that place but politics has always been self-serving in nigeria going there and um, this is not the way we started really yes it's a fourth republic thing we have our history we have our history and nobody can change those history, the, the, historical facts. The only thing that no human being in Nigeria can, can change, change them. The because only, those are facts. The only thing that takes people from obscurity to limelight is politics. Let a poor that man is go. what it has become. When a poor man goes because into politics, he comes out rich, look, extremely rich. This is where countries like Senegal and Kenya, I would say they are lucky. Hmm. And Ghana too. And maybe Rwanda. Yes. They are lucky. Why are they lucky? Senegal and Kenya had never had military intervention in their governance. Mm. In the history. Ghana was fortunate to have a Rollins. And Rwanda was fortunate to have a Kigami. You understand? We have never had a leader in that class in this country. And those who, are, who had the potentials never got there. Look around Southwest. You see Awolowo's legacy all over. Now imagine him having the opportunity to be president just for two years. Hmm. That's why people will say he's the best president we never had. That's not coming from me. It's an historical yeah, fact. When, when the best so of when, the country is in the past, that is what we are saying. Because the military guys took over the stage. And that's why I will not forgive like Nadeko, for instance. For taking the back seats Nadeku. when as a twin. 
when Abu Salam started his transition. Nadeko was but supposed they fought to be our they fought and they handed over the prize to people who never participated in it. And now they have taken over and they are doing what they like. You are now complaining again. You cannot complain. Okay, so uh, Governor Baseki explodes. We cannot secure Nigeria from the center anymore. You see, when Obaseki speaks, um, I think this is the third time, you know, he will be talking tough on certain issues. And I've observed that initially, you may disagree with him. You remember, this is the governor that first alerted Nigerians to the fact that... We are printing money. Uh, many people at, <laughs> at that time asked him to shut up. But eventually, I, I think the Senate is still dealing with the mess now. So you have in the Vanguard newspaper, Governor Baseki explodes. We cannot secure Nigeria from the center anymore. Now, that story asks for riders. Let's redesign the country or... That ends with an ellipsis. The second rider says, vows not to run for president or any elective office under the present structure. Uh, that's a personal promise. Uh, we've heard that before. Explains how federal government can be made accountable to the people. Why I hardly lose my battles. Now, the governor of Edo State, Mr. Gordon Obaseki, has carved a niche for himself for being blunt. Oh, I've not even seen this. Has entreating his opinion and always speaking truth to power. The strong willed governor hosted a crew from the Vanga newspapers in Benin City, Edo State, last Thursday, and as usual, was in his element. And so, these are the things, you know, some of the things he said. We cannot secure Nigeria from the center anymore. You see, my concern is the fact that many groups, individuals, have been on this for too long a time. When people begin to echo a particular thing, those in government, is it that they are not listening? When they listen and they hear people repeatedly, those who are governing, talking about this thing all the time, how does it feel? This is a governor. We cannot secure Nigeria from the center anymore. This week alone, I can't remember how many times TRG was in the University of Ibadan two days ago talking about the same thing. Many people have spoken about this. Those are the aims of affairs. Don't look. We've been talking and talking and talking without acting without acting yes yes is indirectly speaking to restructuring how much more has he you know put into that talking he's a governor he's still a governor he's a member of the nigerian governors forum that is one cult that is giving this country problem you call it a court? That is what it means to me because it's not a registered organization and it's not recognized by the law. But yet it's so powerful and influential in determining what happens in the country. You understand what you are saying here? And he's an integral member, being a second time governor, a very strong member of that body. You understand? Has he spoken to his colleague, made them see reason? Come, we need. Because. That is one body that can fast track the restructuring if he pulls that influence that they used to you know, uh, bully the federal government with. If they should come together with one voice. But on state police, some of them will say we cannot afford it. Some of them will say we are not ready for state police. Some of them will say the time to do, uh, do state policing is now. Division. You understand? So, and these are core national issues that is affecting us. When we say restructuring, some will begin to look at how it's not going to favor them. And they will begin to downplay it. There are so many innovative legislation that the National Assembly had passed that never scaled through the state assemblies because the governors were not in support of it. So when he speaks like this, fine, you are saying the truth. But you are in a position of influence. Have you used that to, as, to expedite uh, action on what you are saying? So when, you know, someone like um, Abbas Sanjo would say, let's restructure, showing car will follow suit, nearly everybody 
<clears throat> especially having gone into government you know <laughs> you know the main offense that uh, president obasanjo committed against i wouldn't want to say the nigerian states but against most people is the fact that he had the best opportunity to do what to restructure and he never did it one he was the pioneer president in this first republic two he worked with a naive national assembly that has to be sent to the u.s for training he had the best of lawyers as his friends even loyal to his government who had seen this concept are they saying would they say that they never studied that document the factors fueling this call for restructuring were not this many at that time somebody you will agree it appear, always been there it appears so they have always been there the, right rate, from the, the rate of hunger now right from the what look was different from is, that of uh, that 20 is what is year 2000 it. you understand but the thing is the 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 the, the, the saying goes is teaching time will save nine he had that opportunity to stitch when it was just you no know, when we're at latent stage of the problem but he did not now the thing has gone so complex that you don't even know if you are to stitch or even condemn the garment and get another one that is the the, the point we are now but do you agree with obaseki that uh, governing from the center solely will not we no longer work because there's too much power and resources concentrated there which uh, is not good for federalism for federalism okay um join me on bottom line for more now let, let's look at these court restrains amewule 25 pro wiki assembly members from acting as rivers lawmakers um question is okay let me take some paragraphs a state high court in port Harcourt has granted an interim injunction restraining martin amewule from parading himself as the speaker of the river state house of assembly in a ruling delivered on friday charles wally the presiding judge also restrained 25 other assembly members from parading themselves as legislators the motion party was fired by the factional speaker victor jumbo and two assembly members, Sokari Goodboy and Urubie Miga Timothy, loyal to Siminala Ifubara, governor of River State. You see, what is happening in River State is worthy of note. Um, you remember, these people moved from the PDP to APC. At some point in time, the president waited in, they were reabsorbed and all that. Now, a court in River State gave this order. What we have seen of late is another court in Abuja, you know, usually, you remember the Kogi issue, and it's been like that. But we are here to hear from any court, maybe federal court in Abuja on this. So, but does this mean that these ones will lose their seat? With this pronouncement, are they no longer lawmakers in River State? Look, what <clears throat> happened when you are seeing an injunction coming late in the evening of a Friday? knowing that saturday is not a working day at least they will enjoy the victory for like two three days but by monday morning i know before noon on monday <laughs> you will see a counter judgment judgment okay you, you you've seen that trend too <laughs> that is what will happen but what they don't understand both the amewile group the governor himself wiki himself is like they're like people living in a big house you understand carrying sledgehammer and beginning to hit the pillars lungs of the house while they are still inside wanting to collapse it as if the house collapses it's not going to collapse on all of them but you have in the cable fubara gazette's executive order moving rivers assembly seating to government house that is his what's own, happening that is his own use of sledgehammer uh. because you cannot correct an illegality with an illegality Similar if Obara, governor of River State, has gazetted an executive order moving the sitting of the State House of Assembly to the government house. So the governor is saying that that's complex. Two days ago, he, he strolled into the complex, complex with his shoulder high, waiting, going there to bully them. Yesterday, the assembly member, the 25, uh, 27 men, said 
the governor is threatening, uh, threatening them that what he wants to do is to demolish the quarters and it's a new quarters and they are comfortable inside. So, so the police that have been deployed there, on whose order, state or federal order? It is still sketchy. We do not know. But police <laughs> have taken over yeah. that complex. So, when you have, they could be there to protect the lawmakers. They could be there on the orders of, uh, or the influence now, I will not say order, the influence of the governor. You understand? But by the end of today, we would know why those police officers are there if they are there to protect today so is not an official day but they are still there at least they would have been interactions but and what, the part of that interaction would have come what, what do you public. suspect on whose order do you think this please you know could have been mobilized that well day? in my own thinking if the governor had been there the day before it could be that they are someone to protect the 27 from from Abuja. another impending yes from another impending demolition okay like the assembly complex original one was demolished and the fact that he is gazetting to move the assembly seating to government house does he want to match the executive and the legislature together in the river he's giving them a conference room um they will be sitting there. does he want to match? it has never happened before does he want to mow he wants to now be sitting at plenary with them does it make sense that's why I said they are using sledgehammer, all of them, to collapse the column of the building they are inside. It's okay. to collapse on all of them. Now, look at this. And the reason why they are going away, you know why? Why? Why the government at the center? They know what to do. Oh. But because Rivers is hosting a significant part of our oil infrastructure. So that state is strategic and significant. They cannot afford it uh, to afford it, uh, having it born. Okay, so you That have... is why you see all manner of in. Uh, interest, interest arising but, but the leaders the core leaders across party that are resident in that state folding their hands rather than coming together to reconcile they are taking side those are the ones that will be blamed at the end of the day okay but you look at this coming from body judge setting fire on river state may end this democracy body judge wants now it goes on to appeal to president tinubu and pdp leaders does the pdp still have leaders um uh setting fire on rivers may affect rivers government but to end our democracy i will mean, not agree with it okay hold on hold on to your thoughts let's go on this commercial break we'll be back This is to announce admission is now open at the Impact School of Broadcasting and Communication, ISBC. ISBC is now on NBTE, federal government approved institution where you can obtain a national diploma in mass communication, accountancy and computer science. At ISBC, we have fantastic facilities like a modern computer lab, innovation hub, digital language lab and digital library among others. To get your admission form, visit our takeoff campus located at Impact House, Kolapo Ishola Estate, General Gas, Yana Church, Akubo Ibadan. You can also fill out the form online at impactpolytechnic.ng. Remember, you need five credits in relevant subjects, including English language and mathematics, and the damn score of at least 100. We are also enrolling for the Accounting Technician Scheme, West Africa. And if you're interested in starting your tech career and mentorship, our Innovation Hall is the place to be. For more information, give us a call at 0803. 326-4646 or 0813-273-4094 ISBC Beyond Your Certificate Experience the divine at the upcoming Christ Hills Saves and Freeze Crusade in the heart of Ibadan. Join us at the main bowl of Adama Siba Sport Complex, Queen Cinema, Mokola Ibadan on May 23rd and 24th, 2024, starting 4.30 p.m. Be immersed in the spirit as Pastor and Evangelist Gerardo Irias, Pastor Nestor Laura and Evangelist Marlon Bonilla, Minister, the Power of the Lord, Chairman of the Crusade, Reverend Titus Murakio. Our esteemed Chief host is Apostle Joshua Akiyamiju, or your State Count Chairman. Welcomes you to this transformative event conveyed by Pastor ASE Ogedengbe. Don't miss the Pastors Conference on May 22nd, 2024, at the International Conference Center, University of 
Ibadan. Get ready for an enriching experience filled with God's word, deliverance, and much more. For inquiries and blessings, please call 0805-591-1317 or 0813-451-9019. Come and are you looking forward to enhancing your skills and knowledge in the world of technology and innovation? Do you want to be on the cutting edge in the emerging world of artificial intelligence and innovation? The Metro Innovation Hub and Workspace is here to help you. We offer a wide range of courses designed to equip you with the essential skills and expertise needed to succeed in today's rapidly evolving digital landscape. With dedicated and experienced facilitators guiding you every step of your way, our ongoing courses will ensure that you stay ahead of the curve. Our current course offerings include foundational web design, JavaScript development, and all the essential skills needed by anyone who wishes to make a mark in the world of web design and development and artificial intelligence. We also have a variety of courses which will cater for different interests and goals. Whether you're interested in data analysis with Python, backend development, cybersecurity, digital marketing, UI UX design, or mobile app development, we've got you covered. At Metro Innovation Hub, we can on learning so every student will have Opportunity to build several projects during the training. It will also lead to certification by relevant bodies. For more information, kindly reach out to Timothy on 0703-609-9830 or Tokwe on 0813-877-4633. Or better still, come to Impact House located along the General Gas Iano Church Road, Ibado. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your skills, unlock your full potentials, and open doors to the exciting career prospects. Enroll to Today with Metro Innovation Hub and Workspace. Remember to contact Timothy on 0703-609-9830 or Tokwe on 0813-877-4633. Announcer, Metro Innovation Hub and Workspace. All right, welcome back, everyone. Setting fire on River State may end this democracy, but the judge warns. A former deputy national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Chief Olabo the Judge, on Friday urged elders and stakeholders of the party to intervene in the political crisis rocking River State, warning that it may become a national conflagra confl uh, conflagration. Those lawmakers in the House of Reps, I think the 60 of them, one of the allegations levied against Damagum as the national chairman, and one of the reasons why they wanted the neck to ask him to step aside was because in Damagum led National Working Committee, they do not see an opposition. A court two days ago restrained the PDP from touching that man. Some persons are not happy. Uh, they are not happy with the way things, you know, uh, playing out in that party. But Body George here is appealing to PDP elders and stakeholders that on this reverse issue, rise up, speak up. He says another operation wait here is in the making. For those who know what that means, but you have Timmy Frank in the cable. Timmy Frank to Tinubu ensure there is peace in rivers. It is critical to Nigeria's economy. Yes, uh, I, I agree more with uh, Timmy Frank. And I, I, I said that earlier that the strategic importance of rivers being host to most of our oil infrastructure is the reason why everybody is interested in what is happening there. You understand? Uh, linking it to wet here, yeah, probably because of the militant nature of the Niger Delta people. You understand? But it's still going to be limited to rivers. The military presence in that environment. They would rather be deployed to rescue the situation. And the worst case scenario would be a declaration of state of emergency, which means. Either the governor is impeached or a state of emergency what, what, is declared, the governor loses. What is that? That is why I'm saying you don't begin to chisel and hammer the structure what, but, but, of the house. You are sitting here. Okay, so um, you see, some persons will call what is happening in River State political hypocrisy. Some of the things Fubara 
has been accused of is actually not new. These are some of the things you call the Nigerian governors from a court. Many governors have been seen to, you know, have committed the same offense. What is so... Withholding local government fund. Is, is that of, a new narrative? How many of them had issues, this kind of issues with their state assembly? What's happening in River State? River what is state, the What's going look, on? The governor is not in control of the assembly. That is very, very important for any governor. There will be problem. And that is why we are having issues. And that's why he's struggling to have control. Just the way Amana is going about it is the problem he has. And he has few number. You cannot, there's no way four can be majority over to But some persons will tell you this is all about his predecessor, who is great. a minister. Now, the man seems to be keeping quiet. He's just, you know, <laughs> but he's the one that is now coming, being here, being there at the same time. Do you understand? And the, the person that the people are seeing the more is the one they will talk about the more. There's no way Wiki can exonerate himself from whatever is happening or from the actions of his, uh, uh, what is it called now, children in the state assembly, political children now. But the thing is, he has not gone to Rivers in recent time. He's simply focusing on his job because when he was too vocal, people condemned him. People, yes, we spoke that he should shut up his mouth, he should allow the man to govern. Now, the man too is now distracting himself. You told us that no sacrifice is too big to pay. Why are you rescinding on that word? People will not take you seriously. If you know you are going to fight, you should have fought right from the beginning. Okay. Yes, so those are things that we are saying. And look, in this situation, the president has intervened at some point. People did not like his manner of intervention. Now he's looking. It is the responsibility of the PDP now to rise up to the occasion because the governor remains a PDP governor. People are resigning from the PDP. Which puts a question mark on the leadership what, of the have party. You, okay, they, they just had a, uh, a, neck. A, a neck meeting. And all the people that attended and spoke about the neck said that was the best discussion they have had in a long time. So now, coming out of that and still not being able to address a very serious issue that they are having, that is one. Their governors are not on the same page. You understand? Even on this matter, even on the matter that they discuss. That means, are they deceiving Nigerians or they are deceiving themselves? All right, um, Sumbo, let, we, we need to move on. Um, there are other issues. And now you have that of um, Yaya Belo. Court refuses to vacate arrest warrant against Yaya Belo. Fails to stop trial. The Federal High Court in Abuja has rejected a request by Yaya Belo, former governor of Kogi State, to stop his trial in the 80 billion era fraud case instituted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Bello, through his lawyer, Abdul Wahab Mohammed, asked the court to stay further proceedings on the criminal charge. So you have that. In the Vanguard newspaper, you have Yaya Bello's lawyers uh, telling the court that they do not know the whereabouts of, you know, their client. Um, we don't know the whereabouts of Yaya Bello. You have, you know, um, the lawyers to... Uh, um, Yaya Be you have the lawyers to Yaya Belu alleged 80.2 billion era fraud. We don't know where Yaya Belu is. Uh, we don't know where Yaya Belu is. Lawyer tells court. The federal high court sitting in Abuja on Friday declined to set aside the order it issued for the arrest for the immediate past governor of Kogi State Alaji Yaya Belu. So the court said that it's got case to answer. The lawyers came to court to represent him but they said they don't know his whereabouts i think he from his hiding sometimes he said he's only afraid of the arrest that he can appear in court but him not appearing in court now is and i told you then when we first talked about this issue that his body language is that of guilt that's why he's behaving in this way if he's truly innocent, like he is uh, claiming to be, there's no reason why he should be hiding or there's no reason why he should be afraid of coming to court. Is he 
afraid of him being arrested at the court premises or because right now the judge is a human being out of provocation he <laughs> can slam <laughs> slam the man into detention and there's no way once he makes that pronouncement <laughs> yes, it, it must be complied with. But, but, but <laughs> look at what the court say. Come out from your hide, come out from hiding to face trial. Anti crime commission won't kill you. Court tells runaway former governor Yaya Belo. You can imagine that word, runaway. These are things that shouldn't be. Like I said on another platform, that Yaya Belo is an Iberian man. These are warriors. It's a disgrace to that. A clan because really? warriors are not meant to be hiding they come out to face the uh, whatever challenge okay um, let him come out and stop embarrassing his people because he, he, he has told nigerians what his fears are the thing is if he thinks he's hiding is himself they know where he is they are just they just don't want the drama to you know to continue beyond the level it is okay uh okay because of our time uh let's quickly touch on one or two other stories uh, before uh, we go this morning, Kogi, some students were abducted, you know, in Kogi State. Man hunt has been launched for them in Zamfara State. Of course, uh, these non state actors struck again, uh, leaving tales of tears and woes. Across the country, uh, terrorists killed 20 community residents in zamfara state within the last few months you have okay man hunt for abductors of nine kogi varsity students that is going on now you have in the guardian newspaper military in sober mood as terrorist ambush kill over 50 soldiers and officers in eight months the past eight months came with manifest grieving for the nigerian military has over 50 officers and soldiers were ambushed and killed by the bandits and other adding criminal in the country. That's quite unfortunate. Um, they have to pay the supreme prize. But amidst all of that, you have the chief of defense staff in the cable saying retired military officers should be brought into government for their experience. Christopher Musa chief of defense staff says retired military officers should be brought into government given their wealth of experience musa said this on thursday in kaduna after the pulling out dinner organized by the infantry corps in honor of retired infant generals i think 29 of them were said to have been pulled out he said most retired generals and ex-army personnel still have a lot to offer nigeria but i've seen in the past retired generals appointed minister of defense national security advisors have you know in recent past been retired military officers but this is coming from general christopher musa that retired military officers should be brought into government for their experience if you didn't state the road yet <clears throat> they should come and play because uh, between 1999 and dates uh, we we'll say this is the first time that we will not be having one of them in the first four positions. Under Obasanjo himself was a retired military general. Under Yaradu and Jonathan, David Mack was the Senate president, a retired military general. Buhari was a retired military general. You understand so they've always been in government they've always been in government this is the first time that we will not be having one occupying the first let me say for the first three positions and as you have said they've always been minister of defense minister of state for defense chief of uh, national security advisor they've always held those positions before now because this is the first time we'll be having a retired police officer as the NSC in recent years. So, they've always been in government. If he wants that to, if he wants that, uh, that is suggestion to fly, he should have rolled out the achievement of all those ones who had served. 
security situation got worse under Buhari, who we thought would be able to just finish the whole thing within six months. But it got worse because before he came, we were only thinking of Boko Haram. But banditry came and became so <laughs> more deadly and <laughs> worse off than Boko Haram. That was when he, SM, and the unknown government began to ravage the southeast region and were declaring public holidays. <laughs> you understand? Under his own watch. Security was more of a mess. So if, he, if they had recorded serious achievements, that can be considered. But if they had been there, they've always been there, and you are saying they should be brought back, which experience are they offering us? All right. Um, bandits kill 30 farmers in Zamfara. Uh, maybe the food those ones will produce for the nation. That's minus what 30 people would, would be quite unfortunate. Bandits kill 30 farmers in Zamfara. Okay, you have um, good luck, Jonathan, lamenting that some of the novel ideas, novel ideas I introduced were abandoned after I left office. Good luck, Jonathan, on that. Uh, you have in the Vanguard newspaper, why escaped prison inmates are never rearrested. Um, let me quickly, okay, it has two writers, government failure to publish fleeing inmates' identities, worrying, and that's coming from experts. How to permanently avert jailbreaks, Professor Awakalu? Uh, is it true that the government in 2020 or 2021, thereabout, when we had national. I was going to ask who are those experts who are saying that. They've always published their identities. It's just that, uh, you know, someone who is incarcerated and had the opportunity to escape and he escaped, he will not stay where <laughs> he will be seen. That's why most of them are never found. Hmm. So that they find their way out of the country through the bush path, or they go to one remote village and begin to live I, I, a quiet I, lifestyle. I don't know if it has changed. The last time I checked, the number of fleeing inmates that Nigeria is in search of runs into well over... So that's the thing. They, they've always published their identity. Okay. And it cannot be said. It's just that the, the, the break, too, have always been very questionable. Mm. Yeah, they look like more of stage managed one than actual jailbreak. That is where where I expect them to be. You know, uh, that's the, the direction I expect their statement to be coming from. But to say they don't publish, no, they have always been publishing them. Okay. But those who have escaped will not stay where they will be rearrested. It is prison we are talking about, not police cells. Um, <laughs> what's happening in Oyo State? Uh, some persons we we. <laughs> Paruben Fashion Roti at 98, Makende celebrates our Feni Ferry leader. Um, OISEC has presented certificates of return to elected chairman and their vice. Some political parties in Oyo so State. Selected chairmen. You call them selected? No, elected chairman. That's how. Uh, Oyo traders state protest. One government to steer clear of crisis. Uh, traders in Oyo State trooped out in their hundreds on Thursday to resist what they alleged as illegality and excesses of Alaji Yekini Abbas, whom they described as personal non grata and vowed to end his alleged illegal activities. I think that has to do with the leadership of, um, of the market. Um, you have um, electricity tariff, labor plans neck meeting, hired protest. So, organized labor is planning a protest over the electricity tariff. Boko Haram insurgency destroyed Sambisa forest, Zulum lament. So, I opened the phone lines for reactions take notes this is a newspaper review before some persons will come out asking i know what about your state if i don't see i don't subject to analysis right thank you so much for your understanding zero nine one six one zero four seven six nine eight zero eight one one zero five two six four eight seven zero nine zero two two eight zero nine two and five seven these are the numbers please once you call in many people are on the are on the phone make your contribution short thank you hello good morning good morning Mr. thank you yeah something i can tell from Africa. you're welcome thank you uh, on the issue of restructuring obaseki is right and that is the truth that restructuring seems impossible this is the reason people who come into power have accumulated power Though they might have told you they were going to do this, they will restructure, they will do this. But once they get there, the 
it's not possible for them to develop power and have lesser power with them when someone has enjoyed big power. But it, the issue is all of us must be united. Because when issues like this come up, you see people say, okay, what is it you want to restructure? I've many times, uh, one of your analysts, uh, what's his name? He, he's been here for long. Uh, he, he would ask you, what is it that you want to restructure? If we are not united, there cannot be a solution. The TRG, the Rebel Group, has started it. The issue is, if all of us will speak with one voice, and other groups and stakeholders will also speak with the same voice, that the restructuring is the solution. Honestly, we'll, that's a good way to start. Thank you. All right, Samson Akintaro, thank you so much. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You from my what, You're welcome. Yeah. What is Ezekiel, turn down about? the volume of that radio, I'm please. Turn down the volume of that radio. Okay. What right. is happening in the right state? I cannot call any. Hello. Please go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead. Cannot can can cause any kind of emergency. I mean, cannot cause. Wait here. Sorry. Don't you know, keep off. Why? Because uh, when the uh, work here was happening, it was because uh, it was the prime minister that was that was governing us. You know, not like this centralized system of government that was being used by Goye uh, Rosen in 1934. So, so that can happen. Okay. The federal government is capable to subdue everything. If it wants to subdue it right now, it is only that they are just trying to watch how everything will be. Okay. Mm-hmm. With security policy, absolutely. That's what I want to say. Thank you, Ezekiel from LA. Good morning. Good morning, Anu. Thank you. I'm Dara Adedino. I'm from Mara Makede. You're welcome. Uh, let me quickly say that political of rivers in rivers state need attention by now. The elders and political state to el- uh, state, uh, stakeholders in the land should come round the table to get the matter settled. For the electorates to enjoy the dividend of democracy, there must be peace in the land. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Adediro. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Thank you. Yeah, this is Allah from Rwanda. Allah, welcome. Yes, sir. On that, uh, Governor Basaki's uh, comment, I, want, I will have asked, how many out of the bills that have been sent to the state assemblies for the first journey, how many have he said as a, as a governor, how many of the assets sent back as approval? The, the concerning national, I mean, the state assembly, concerning the local government, concerning the local government fund, and so on. He's in the position of influence. As said by the honor is here, he can do it if he wants. We just not they were just we just only we just like to pay this service or the river crisis it is better for the elders in the rivers to call the two big weeks let them call them to meet and resolve the matter and talk to them they should not be better instead of instead of doing that each of them will be taking side okay this is not a time for take side let them call the two of them into a ratable discussion and resolve the issue amicably mm. because he'll our land. Amen. Thank you so much. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you. My name is Salaji Oladipolawa from Olumi. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. On the issue of, uh, I mean, what Chris Musa has said about using retired military generals, have we not been, have we not been using them? You see, your analyst did well by, anal- I mean, by naming those that have been in power. What did Buhari, what did he do? And have, have they lost their sense of reasoning? If they want to come back, they, they, look, they are there now. We have not been able to see what exactly they are doing. No pass mark. And they are now saying if, if they are tired, let them go back to their barracks. They should not, because, uh, you know, they, they are, as uniform men, they could not capture Boko Haram. Nigeria is in danger. You know, and the military are there. They can fast salaries and what have you. And now you are you are saying that, that they should they should involve them after retirement in governance. You know, this this cannot be taken. All right. Good morning. Thank you so much, Allah Jaladeko. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you. I wish you the same. You're welcome. 
ਸਾਥੀਓ ਅਗਲੀ ਵਾਰ